Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is officially Thursday, October 26th, 2023. Hey, before we get too far into this video, I want to repeat the announcement that I made yesterday on my 8 p.m. Tropics talk. I will be very soon coordinating with a few of the different relief efforts that are anticipated to help out with Hurricane Otis post-impact out there in Acapulco, Mexico. As resources begin to pour into that afflicted area, I will be accepting donations and starting some sort of a channel fundraiser to help donate money to those areas deeply affected by catastrophic Category 5 Hurricane Otis. Okay, guys, stay tuned for more information. I'm still working out the logistics and all the different levels of information that are going to be taken into consideration when coordinating an effort to this level. But because you guys have shown so much generous support for my channel in particular and our subscriber count continues to go up, I feel as if it's only right that now while we build some momentum internally, we start to reach out externally to areas deeply impacted by some of the strong weather we've been forecasting here in the Weather Center. So please stay tuned for more information. I'll definitely have more input out there for you guys to look at as the days go by, hopefully very soon. I don't want to sit on this for too long, but as it stands currently, it doesn't seem like relief efforts have fully begun, despite the National Guard being in place out there in Mexico. So please be on watch. I will definitely put this out for you guys as soon as I can and as soon as I have all the logistics put together. So you can definitely expect we're going to try to get this off the ground one way or another. All right, folks, welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Let's jump right in because today I'm definitely a little bit more concerned than I have been over the last couple days with what we have going on out in the Caribbean Sea. So forgive me, we're starting off with this conglomeration of a picture. This is off of my personal device, my iPhone specifically. I shared this on Instagram earlier today because the GFS is on a roll as of recently. We have not seen this level of run-to-run -run consistency, and I mean at this level throughout the hurricane season. I'll tell you that right now for lack of better term. The GFS has not been this consistent, this aggressive, and this persistent in terms of forming up a cyclone out there in the Caribbean Sea and potentially pushing it towards not only Jamaica, Cayman Islands, and Cuba, but Florida. What we are looking here is a collage that I put together using one of the apps I use for my Instagram posts and what I have outlaid here with the most recent update today, the 12 Zulu model run that just finished populating being in the lower right hand corner of the screen, the close up of Florida getting hit by what looks to be a 967 millibar hurricane. Across each of these individual pictures, these are from the last couple of days. This is from, I believe, late Monday into Tuesday. The GFS has been forecasting some sort of a low pressure to spin up down there in the Caribbean, populate off to the north and northwest, and then eventually curve back to the northeast as it enters the Gulf of Mexico with the approach of our next long-awaited and anticipated trough and frontal system down at the surface level. Am I 100% on board with this? You know, it, it's changed. My opinion has changed over the last few days, and that's why we're actually getting started with the GFS today because I got to applaud it. We haven't seen this level of accuracy and consistency with the GFS since the start of the hurricane season back in June. I kid you not, guys, and we're going to fact check that here right now. So yes, here we are looking at today's 12Z model run of the GFS, and you can see the reason I'm actually looking at this a little bit harder is because if you take a look at both of these low pressure centers here, this 1,004 millibar low just to the southeast of Jamaica and this other little vortice that's spinning up and headed towards the northern Bahama Islands, this actually verifies very, very well with all of our other model data. It actually shows up really well on the Canadian, the Icon, the European model, the Korean model, the UK model, every model that you want to put on the table, the GFS is singing in tune with all of these different model platforms, spinning up potentially two different low pressure centers as we get towards the Halloween time frame here in the United States. Where this gets concerning, and I'll show you what it is that my theory is in terms of why we could possibly see something spin up down there into the early portions of November here in a moment. But for now, as we go through time, you can see that we get those two little vortices to clear out, very reminiscent of what all of our other models are indicating, what they have been indicating over the last several days. The GFS is on board with this. You could see a tremendous area of low pressure begin to form up. And then there you have it. Cyclogenesis occurs. We have a tropical storm quickly deepening into a hurricane. And it takes a very, very similar track to the likes of Hurricane Adalia and better yet known Hurricane Charlie in 2004 and Hurricane Ian of 2022 with a projected landfall somewhere in southwestern Florida right around that Charlotte Harbor, Fort Myers location, that southwest Florida quadrant. We've seen a lot of major hurricanes impact. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you right away, I'm not 100% sold on this. As of today, I will admit our little internal forecast the 48 chances and the seven day chances. I'm going to go ahead and bump that seven day chance to about a 30, 35% chance just because all of our other models agree something might be forming in the Caribbean. The GFS is the only one executing it to the fullest extent and showing us a major hurricane trying to develop out there, but it is ebbing and flowing with all of our environmental parameters. It is ebbing and flowing really well with all of our other model data from other model platforms for that matter. So at this point, it has earned back just a hair, guys, a fraction of my trust. And that's why
why we're reporting on it today because it's been very consistent. It's been bullseyeing Florida, the southeast United States, and the rest of our Caribbean islands to the north of where it forms up for days now, guys, since Monday, Tuesday, and we're now Thursday, halfway through Thursday for that matter. So now what's going on out there? What is possibly fueling this development, this cyclogenesis? Well, we have another Omega Block Ridge perched over the western United States, western North America for that matter. You can see that sharp amplitude ridge extending north into the Alaskan Peninsula right in through here where we have two upper low vortices and trough axes entrenched on either side of this ridge. It's creating that infamous Omega Block that I explained to you guys about maybe sometime early last week, middle of last week we were doing a segment covering a very similar setup. And what I think is happening with that blocking pattern, we are not allowing any of these big, those large scale features, the trough axes, the ridge over the south United States and into the Caribbean for that matter, and to include the upper level low that is now entrenched Tammy and rapidly transitioned it from an actual hurricane to a post-tropical hurricane, according to National Hurricane Center. And I do have a bone to pick with them today because I'm not too sure why they went ahead and said final advisory for Hurricane Tammy and then re-highlighted it at a 30% chance of development, whether it be subtropical or not. You should have just continued carrying advisories, guys, or did something to mitigate the politics behind carrying advisories for a post-tropical cyclone. That's just my opinion. Anyways, National Hurricane Center doesn't have anything official in the Caribbean just yet. Okay, so since nothing is moving, all these weak little vortices, if you guys look, we're at 500 millibars looking at all of our different vorticity couplets. I'll go ahead and draw a few of them out for you guys so you get a better idea of what it is we're fixating on the most. And right now, what the upper level pattern seems to be doing as you track this through time is allowing for this open channel of vorticity as well as off the main development region, the tropical Atlantic, both of these source regions are allowing these vorticity couplets to spill in to the very primed and potent Caribbean Sea. As you follow this through time, you can see we get a little bit of increased vorticity, not only from Central America, but from the remnants of Tammy, some upper level influence breaking off from her circulation. That cold pocket we were talking about last week does continue to manifest itself down over the southeast and into the Caribbean Sea. That doesn't quite do it, but then if you watch as we begin to vacate that upper air pattern and finally get a return to normal, some more flow across west to east, the North American continent and into the Atlantic, we now have a trough picking up all that leftover vorticity down there. So all that vorticity had to come down and out of the east over parts of South America, Central America, responsible for a lot of the thunderstorm activity we're seeing down there today and probably over the next couple days, which is also aiding and increasing our humidity and our moisture for that source region. Another ingredient we can check off the box. As that next trough system comes down and we can finally clear the pattern of that blocking setup, that's when we get a lot of that extra leftover vorticity over the Caribbean and right on cue. There you have it. Something in the upper level spills down to the surface, quickly consolidates, and then there you go. Here comes another upstream trough, very typical of this time of year, picking it up and unfortunately steering it into Florida. Now, do I think this is going to happen? It could. It definitely could. Is it the most likely outcome as of right now? It's still very uncertain. We have all of our models highlighting the chances of development. CPC is on board with the area being primed for development. We've had a lot of hellacious activity in the East Pack, and I'll show you exactly why I'm actually exploring this hypothesis a little bit more than I have over the last several days. So obviously we're very familiar with this chart. This is our anomaly chart for the Caribbean. And you can see across the board, even into the western portions of the Caribbean where we have seen a little bit of cooling, we're still anywhere between a degree to almost three degrees hotter down there in comparison to climatological records for this time of year. We have seen some cooling off the mid-Atlantic coastline in the southeast and a little bit of cooler temps into the Gulf of Mexico, but not enough to completely eradicate any potential for tropical cyclone development. You come on over to the sea surface temperatures and it goes without saying we've been covering this quite a bit all of YouTube and the meteorological community has we're still very very hot sitting pretty at 30 to 31 degrees Charlie across the Caribbean with plenty of fuel left over in the Gulf of Mexico albeit it cooling down there to support a hurricane forming up if it does get going now bringing you over to the East Pack because we're all very familiar with what just happened with Hurricane Otis you can see that area of 30 degree waters off the Mexico coastline still in place I do anticipate there will be a little bit of upwelling that shows itself over the next 72 to 96 hours, especially with how powerful that storm must have tapped it of all of its energy source deep in the low levels of the ocean surface. But 
we have very similar dynamics, guys. We had an anti-cyclone and a little bit of an upper-level jet streak going over top Hurricane Otis. We have the exact same water temperatures. And if you come over to the sea surface anomaly chart, we are starting to see a little bit of that upwelling take place and because of previous major hurricanes that moved through that region. But all in all, we have a very similar environment. So whether or not the GFS pans out at 100%, Hurricane, Southeast United States landfall, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Cuba got to watch, it goes without saying that the possibility of that scenario coming true is not entirely out of the realm of possibility. We have everything there to support it. It's just a matter of if we get a system to get going and the ingredients stay in place throughout its early to midpoint of its life cycle. So I'm not buying into it 110% yes, but I'm watching. I'm definitely watching for everybody because this could be big. Real quick, guys, we're going to get ready to wrap up the video. I don't have a whole lot of time today and I want to continue to digest all of our upcoming model updates and continue to look at the environment as we go throughout the rest of the day today, tomorrow, Tomorrow, and then into the weekend, of course, especially getting ready for our next 8 p.m. Tropics talk. You can see that the Euro is still on board with above 50% chance that we could see something form up over the next couple of days as we get towards October 31st. And then just around the same time the GFS is highlighting development, you could see a backbuilding or a resurgence of our probabilities. Also, once again, back up to about the 40, 45% threshold in that same general source region. Now, the Euro, I feel, has been very frugal with this. We've seen very many instances of the Euro being frugal with a lot of development. We've seen not only across hurricane seasons, but this one in particular with Lee, Nigel. We also saw the same thing with Philippe. We saw the same thing just now with Tammy. So we got to be careful with how much we want to put into one model. We got to look at everything. And last but not least, I have been paying attention to the Euro. Like I said, the Euro just doesn't want to develop it right now. It does not think we are in a conducive environment to support tropical cyclogenesis. But as you take this loop through time, you can see right around the same time frame as the GFS is anticipating, we do get a low starting to develop or at least lower pressure pressure, albeit maybe disorganized, an area of scattered showers and thunderstorms wandering its way into the Gulf of Mexico before breaking off and moving off to the north-northeast to potentially become another major nor'easter or something off the coastline there. But regardless, we have all this area of immense lowering pressures that could definitely support something spinning up and consolidating, especially with the atmospheric dynamics that look like they want to be in play. So before we close out this video, guys, I want to name three big factors right now. Number one, we got to watch both our low levels in the upper levels out over the main development region and over Central America. Because of the upper air pattern we have in place, it's not impossible to get more energy from the Central American gyre and the East Pack wandering across Central America, Centam, into the Caribbean to help fuel cyclogenesis. We also have to keep close eyes on what exactly happens with our upper level ridge over the Southeast. Depending on where that completely resets itself, we could see another area of anticyclonic air or anticyclonic flow and divergence aloft, that exhaust mechanism we need for hurricanes set up over the Caribbean. If we have two of these ingredients come together, cyclogenesis or formation of a low definitely seems a lot more probable. And then last but not least, we just have to watch real-time data. We have to watch satellite. We have to watch whatever radar data we can get out of there and see exactly what decides to put itself over the hottest portions of the Caribbean or in the same general source regions that a lot of our models are highlighting for the future cyclonic development. I wish I had more time to spend with you guys today. I just wanted to blast out what my initial thoughts with this level of consistency and insistency we've been seeing with the GFS as of recently. I know I've thrown a lot of shade at the GFS on this channel in particular, and I know a lot of you have the same sentiments towards the GFS. But we can't argue with the facts that the GFS has definitely been trending, and it's trending hard. This is like clockwork, what a trend truly definitively looks like in terms of what our forecast models can do. We've been seeing it with every updated run. We haven't skipped a run, guys, since Tuesday at 0Z, 6, 12, 18, 0, 6, 12, 18. We've seen, on a repetitive basis, something developing, deepening into a strong system, and then pushing off to the north and eventually the northeast. So it has my attention. I'm definitely keeping a close eye on it for you guys. I'm not trying to raise awareness or concern or kind of induce a panic, but it definitely has my attention because it's unlike what we've seen from the GFS all hurricane season long. Thank you all for watching today. We'll see you again very soon. I do appreciate all of your kind love and support for this channel, and I hope we can take that same support and that same energy come together and hopefully help those guys out there in Mexico, particularly Acapulco and the localized area that were deeply, deeply impacted and essentially almost wiped out, unfortunately, by Hurricane Otis. I promise you 
you guys. I will try to get this off the ground before we roll too far into the early portions of November. I'm going to continue to do my research offline and see exactly what sort of relief efforts begin to take shape out there. If there's any liaisons or coordinators that I could reach out to here in the local area or digitally somewhere else in the southeast or the whole United States for that matter, I will find somebody that we can send all of this aid and hopefully financial support out there to help that area that's been ravished by Hurricane Otis. So for those of you out there who may be watching, who may have the ability to watch or manage to get out of the way and are tuning in, we're definitely keeping our hearts out for you guys, and we're going to show you as much love as we can from Weather Center Nazario. All righty, guys, we're closing out. We'll talk to you very soon. Thank you for watching once again. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.